Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. In this video, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, it's sort of a twofer. So first off, uh, it's been quite a while since I've done any IC Station uh, product reviews. And they had a couple new electronics kits out. And that's, that's another thing. I haven't assembled a kit in a very long time. So they sent this over. This caught my eye. Now it's a digital FM radio kit where you... It uses a lot of modules and stuff, and it looks like it's pretty simple to build, only a handful of parts, and it looks pretty snazzy from the pictures I've seen. Um, and it has a built-in rechargeable battery. Now, there is a caveat to that. Um, they can't ship the battery. It uses an 18650 cylindrical cell, so you're going to have to procure that on your own. You, you can easily find that um, online, or if you have old laptops, you can easily pull the cells out of that. Just be very careful you're gonna, if you're going to scavenge old uh, lithium cells. Anyway, so it has everything you need except for the battery. And it does charge over USB uh, once you install the battery. But anyway, let's just get into it. Uh, this should be pretty interesting, hopefully. And it's something that is useful because I like listening to the radio every once in a while. Um, so we have mounting hardware. It's hex standoff, screws, nuts, all that kind of stuff. Looks like what? M3 or M4. We have the speaker, which has a cute little um, rectangular speaker like you'd see in um, like a small TV. And this guy is rated uh, 8 ohms, 5 watts. So uh, we'll see the amplifier in a second. And uh, yeah, probably not going to be 5 watts out of this tiny little thing, but um, it should be still loud enough. Uh, we have the rest of pretty much everything else is in here. Uh, the battery holder uh, looks like we have a headphone jack, power switch, lithium battery charger, an aerial, uh, very long tack switch, uh, some chips, headers, I can see the board itself, and I believe one of the modules is in, in here, the main module. Now, pretty much everything related to the radio part itself is pre-assembled on like a daughter, a daughter board uh, that gets soldered to the main board. Uh, all you're really going to be soldering is all through-hole stuff, exception of um, the amplifier chip, but that's a it's a SOIC, so it's fairly large, so that's actually pretty tame. But what's going to be a pain is uh, the micro USB soldering, especially the surface mount pads, that would be really tough for a beginner to do. So I wouldn't try this out if this is your first time soldering something kind of that small. Uh, but if you're up for challenge, then yeah, why not? And beyond that, we have a nice, like, clear acrylic case. And I love these laser-cut acrylic cases, so excited about that. Anyway, let's just uh, pour all the parts out. And there, are, there is a installation manual that they have online. If you're doing this, then I would suggest following that. I'm going to see if I can just kind of wing it. <laughs> that's just the way I am. Yeah, this is a module here. It's a through-hole part. And it has a nice little uh, LCD that shows you what station you're tuned to and, and all that. And I believe you can even have presets and stuff. So yeah, you can see on the back here, uh, there's a main chip. It's uh, Mark JL. Um, that's, I guess, the manufacturer. AG204... G1547-90, probably going to be just a microprocessor. Uh, there is an 18 mega, or Atmel, sorry, 24C. Oh, so this is a uh, serial e squared prom. So I'm guessing it's storing what stations you save to that memory, or maybe that holds the firmware for the module. But yeah, that's, it's a serial memory chip. And we have another chip here, which I'm guessing that's the radio radio tuner chip because I see some sort of filtering doodads uh, passives on that side. We have the main crystal oscillator, lots of filtering. That's interesting. And uh, yeah, just two wires going to a backlight. So this module is backlit. Uh, the uh, lithium charger module is right here. And that is actually interesting. So this is going to be installed like this. So you actually don't have access to this USB. If they redesign this um, a little bit smarter, they might have been able to have this poke out 
um, and charge with this, then you wouldn't need to solder this extra um, surface mount USB port. What I would suggest is going from smallest component first. So in this case, we got this um, surface mount chip and the USB. Those are probably going to be what you want to hit up first so that the board's completely empty. So it's not going to be that difficult. So let's just get started on that. I'm sure you guys would love to watch me peel all this, which will probably take me more time than soldering the entire kit. So I'm going to do this off camera and um, speed through assembling. Using these uh, laser cut pieces and like screwing these nuts in is usually really difficult and time, well not really difficult, but very time consuming. So I'm, I'm not going to bore you guys, otherwise this video is going to be like two hours long. So anyway, let me get on this. I'll get the case together and I'll demo this uh, working. Okay, so we're all together and this took a little bit of time getting everything squished in there. And like I noted, you're going to have to supply your own 18650 battery. So I have, this one was pulled from a very old laptop. Uh, it still charges up uh, just fine. You know, I've tested it outside of this uh, to make sure that it doesn't like you know get super hot or anything like that or exhibit other you know odd issues so this cell already works just fine i just stuck it in here for testing now one thing is um the case design i i mean i like the the way that it slots together and everything but because of you know the um 18650 battery holder uh, the wires come out the end so it makes it quite a tight fit and these bolts uh, on this side prevent this from butting right up against the edge. So it, it is pretty tight of a fit and kind of squishes a wire there. You can see right in there. It does eventually get to, you know, fit everything together and just sort of squish. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap on this side, though, because of that wire, like I noted on the top. But anyway, it's all together and... You should never have to, once you install the battery, you should just be able to leave it in there until the battery, you know, degrades over a couple years. But yeah, uh, this works just fine. The other odd part was I forgot to mention, you actually have to solder the antenna. I thought for some reason that you screwed it on uh, because these antennas have a little screw hole and they're tapped usually um, to accept the screw, but there was no such screw uh, included in the, um, the kit. And, and when I looked at the installation instruction, they show someone just soldering it straight too. So it is what it is. If you have a small nut and screw that'll fit, you could just do it that way. And I think that would actually be more secure. I just turned up my iron heat all the way up and just blobbed a bunch of solder on there. Careful not to touch the antenna or anything while it's you know cooling because it'll get quite hot. Yeah, it works. That's a bit how you're doing. But anyway, uh, so the way that this works is there is a headphone jack. Um, when you plug that in, the speaker turns off exactly like you'd expect. USB charging happens through here. It'll light up the LED on the module when it's charging and then when it's done. Uh, the power button 
um, is right here. It's just a momentary, or not a momentary, it's a latching type. And there are five buttons. There's a mute button, volume up and volume down, and the tolerances are pretty tight. It looks like uh, they chose a switch height just at the right height because they almost barely protrude from the surface. So if they were any shorter, they would not, you would not be able to press them. And there's a P plus and minus button here for tuning. And so when you turn it on, it'll say hi, the backlight comes on and just turn the volume down. You can either turn up or down or just press mute and that'll mute it. So it starts out at 87.5 megahertz. And when you tune up and down, you can either just press the button and it'll do that or if you press and hold it'll scan to the next available station but I can't play that for very long okay so now we're on this blank station and I can't play you guys anything um, you know from the actual radio because it'll be copyrighted uh, one thing that if you tilt the display you can see extra icons that are never used uh, I just thought this was interesting is obviously the tuning strength indicator and that is actually used for um, the radio there's a uh, label that says USB so I'm guessing this chip could also be used to play like mp3s off USB there's a battery indicator and there's a Bluetooth indicator so I'm guessing this kit could have been expanded to support more than just um, FM radio but anyway so I'm gonna take this off and set this down and what we are going to do is I have the only way I can really test this on YouTube is with one of these um, FM transmitters. And this is a really old one and the rubber's turning sticky, so that's not good. I haven't used this in years. And we're going to use it testing with my uh, Creative Zen MP3 player because I stuck some MP3s on there. So we're just going to turn this on. And the radio station is set to 87.5, exactly as this. And hopefully when this turns on, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to play my uh, intro theme song. Might have to turn up the volume quite a bit, but... See how loud this goes. Yeah, I'll make sure to put a headphone user warning in there when I actually upload this. Yeah, volume goes up to 30. It gets very loud. But yeah. This definitely doesn't have a lot of bass. I mean, look how small the enclosure is, and it's not like airtight or anything designed for like optimal acoustics. But yeah, I mean, this is listenable if you want to use this as like a sports radio or just listen to like the news or the weather. Good enough. Or just as, have background music playing. But yeah, let's just turn that off. There we go. So yeah, overall, um, kit costs, I think like 16, 15 or 16 bucks. It took me about an hour to assemble. Uh, actually, the soldering was pretty easy with the exception of uh, the USB jack is pretty by far the hardest thing to solder. So, um, you know, if this is your first time soldering, that, that'll be kind of the difficult point. Uh, but everything else was pretty simple. Assembling the case was the most like tedious <laughs> I wasn't particularly difficult, but it definitely took quite a bit of time squeezing all the wires in. I left all the wires at full length. I probably would have been better off shortening them, uh, like I noted, cutting them to length and then soldering them, but it is what it is. It all assembled pretty well. Um, works as a basic radio. Uh, charges up just fine. I mean, this is this would be a really neat thing when I was a kid to have. I, I really love like clear electronics and I listened to the radio quite a bit uh, when I was younger. So 
But anyway, yeah, if you guys are looking for like a neat, really quick project to do, uh, they have this one and then they have one with just an LED display with no built-in battery that you plug into a wall wall. And that one's a little bit cheaper for memory. But anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. And if you enjoy um, watching me put together kits, just let me know and, you know, I'll see what I can find. Um, and once again, huge thanks to IC Station for uh, sending this kit in for review. Not really review, just sort of really laid back assembly. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.